Hey everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to easily create a spaceship fighting game using the Unreal Engine. I'm going to be creating a project for use with a controller, but if you do not have one available, you will be able to use a keyboard input and follow along. And hopefully by the end of this series, you'll have a solid framework to build upon and create your own game. First tutorial, I'll be using the Unreal Engine as well as Blender to create a few assets and GIMP in order to create some quick materials for the assets. Any 3D modeling software will work, as well as any photo editing software, but these are available for free, and the links are provided below. If this is your first time using the Unreal Engine, let me know any questions you have about what's going on in the comments below, and let's get started. So once you have the Unreal Project Browser open, we can come in here to Games, and go to the Flying Template. We're going to be using this, as it's a good starter um, it has a few things that it's just quick and easy to use and we can change them to what we want. And so we're going to be using the starter content, um, everything else, you just keep it the same and then name it. I'm naming mine Spaceship Simulation and then create project. This can take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on your hardware. Uh, so in this video we're going to be just wor worrying about the movement of the ship. Um, it's a little clunky at the start from what they give you and so we're just gonna tweak a few things, add a few things, and by the end of it we should have a pretty good flying character. So once your browser is open it may take a few seconds again and now it's ready. So this in the middle is the viewport. Um, if you hold down right click you can look around and WSD you can move around um, so this is the level, this is everything that's in it. You can click on props, move them, uh, the floor, you can move it. And there's some other things in here that we might get into later. So you come down here, this is the content browser. Uh, you go to flying, this is the mesh with the UFO in it that our character is set to for now. You have the flying BP, which has the blueprints in it, and that's our character blueprint right there. And the map is the current level we're in. And then start a content. There's a few things in here that we will use later. So for starters, we can play the game and see what's going on. If you hit play now, you will play a new viewport. If you escape, you can come down to here to new editor window. And I like to do that. It's a little better. It's a little cleaner. But from what you can see, um, you move with WSD or if you have your controller the left thumbstick um, you can hit shift or the right trigger and you go faster and if you let go you will slow down a little bit but a few things that we have a little issue with now um, the camera is kind of shoved up on the character the movement is a little stiff the character doesn't really flow with the movement um, and so we're gonna fix that so if you hit escape again, you can exit out of that menu, the window. And then we're going to come in here to blueprints and the flying pawn. Uh, the first thing we want to do is come to viewport. We want to add a box collision. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to make it the scene root by dragging it on top of the plane mesh and hitting compile. So what this does is now this box is the root of this roots it to the scene and not the mesh. And that'll help us later because there'll be a few things that if you don't do that you won't it'll be really confusing why it's not working and then go ahead and drag the spring arm onto the box so we attach it to it instead of the mesh itself and then from there uh, the first thing we notice when playing is that the camera is a little close to the character so we can just drag the spring arm back and that'll push the camera back a little bit maybe a little up and that should be good. We can hit play again and we can see this. That's a lot better. Um, it's still stiff, but it's a little further back. We can see a little bit more. It's kind of what we want. So hit escape. And now we're going to be going to the event graph. Um, first thing we see is event begin play. We don't want this. We don't need it right now. That's for if you have a head mount display. And then we can come down the event tick. This is our movement and our steering rotation. Um, we have thrust, which is 
going faster and slowing down. And then we have the movement up. It's also the movement down. Depending on the axis value, it could be a positive or a negative. And then turning is the same. We move right or left based off it being positive or, or negative. Um, so the movement right is what we're going to work on first. Where you can delete right here um, the rolling speed. We're going to do it a little differently than they have set up. Uh, we're going to do it so we can use the two thumbsticks. Or if you're on keyboard, you can use WSD and up, down, left, right. And so kind of move this a little bit, make it cleaner, drag this out. And then if you drag right here, you can move this whole box. Um, so the first thing you want to do, drag out this plane mesh. And from here, we are going to set the relative rotation. And then connect these up. And then what you have right here is the rotation itself, and you can split these into three different floats. So what we want to work with is the roll float. Um, so if we get the relative rotation from the plane mesh and split it again, we can keep these pitch values and the yaw value um, because we don't need to adjust those right here. And what we need to adjust is this roll. So if you look right here, this axis value is going to be a 0 to 1 from your thumbstick or from your WASD. And it takes it in and multiplies it by turn speed and interpolates that into your current yaw speed. What we want to get right here is we want to get this axis value back down to a 0 to 1. And so we can just divide this by a float and then divide put the turn speed there and now this is back down to 0 to 1. The reason we don't want it right here is because we want to interpolate it. We don't want it to be immediate. We want it to be adjusted slowly into the full angle that we're going to be using. And so from that we want to have an angle that we want to adjust it by. And so if we multiply this by an integer uh, we can put 45 in right here so that's going to be a 45 degree angle at the final angle of the plane when it's turned fully. I think 45 is a good angle to do. You can play with it a little bit and see what you like best. So if we plug that into roll and hit compile, uh, we can play it again. And now when you turn, you see the camera doesn't move with it, but it also just flows a little bit when it turns. And that's something that we like. So next um, is going to be moving up and down. See, it, this feels stiff right here, and we want it to do. We want the camera to move over it as we go down and under it as we go up, so we get a better view of where we're going. So in order to do that, we come back up here to move up and pull this out, and then we're going to drag in our spring arm. And again, we're going to set relative rotation. And then we're going to split the pins. And instead of roll this time, we're going to be doing pitch. So if we get the relative rotation, and then split these again, we can plug the roll in now and the yaw because we don't want to be adjusting these. And we need a new pitch. So the same thing here. Uh, it takes the axis value, interpolates it, and we want to grab this interpolation. So we divide it again by the turn speed. That's going to give us a value of 0 to 1. And then we're going to multiply that by an integer. And this time, we're not going to go as big as 45, maybe 5 for now. We can adjust it later. And then we're going to plug that straight into the pitch. And if we hit play again. Now you can see that the camera moves down when you're going up, it moves up when you're going down, and it just feels a lot better. You can see kind of where you're going. And now for the last part for this video, what we want to do is make it so we can roll on our own. If you hit play again to see, sometimes when you come in, it kind of keeps it at an angle where from going up and down and so we want to be able to correct that 
or even do better maneuvers by rolling the plane without having to turn. And so we want to come into the project settings and we're going to hit input right here. So we're going to make a new input. So you get on the axis mappings, you see these are the inputs for these three things and we're going to add new. And this one is going to be roll right. And then if you click down on this thing, these will show up and what we want to do is grab the gamepad, if you're using the gamepad, the right thumbstick x-axis and keep it at scale 1 and then we can add two more of these for people to follow along on the keyboard. So left, we want to scale it to negative 1 and then keyboard right, we want to keep it at 1. And now what we need to fix first is on the move right we also have left and right on and so we just want to delete these because that'll make it a little awkward so now if we come back into the flying pond blueprint we can create a new input we can drag this away we don't need to adjust that for now if you hit if you right click and type input roll right um, this is what we're going to be started with and so again, um, we want to multiply this axis value by turn speed. Um, and then we want to put this into an F interp 2. Uh, so we want to again make it so this doesn't go straight to the value. It'll slowly, whatever interp speed we set it to, it'll go to that value. So now we want to drag this out and create a new variable. This variable is going to be roll base. Drag it up here. And for the delta time, we want to do world delta seconds. And then a terp speed. Uh, for now, we can just do two. We can adjust that later. And then from here, we want to set this roll base. And now from here, uh, we're going to want to multiply this by 2. Um, and then put this in an F terp again. Target. And then from here, we're going to get the current roll speed. So we want the current to be current roll speed. Delta world seconds again. World delta seconds. And then the interp speed, we want to do this one a little higher. Um, we can set to 50. And then here we're going to be setting the plane mesh again. We actually won't be using the mesh, we'll be using set current roll speed. Set. Plug these in. And then there we have it. Um, you can add a comment box. Oops. You can select all this and add a comment box around it. Um, we can put set roll speed based on turn, based on roll input. Drag that down a little bit. Hit compile again, hit save and play. So now you can see that if you hit left or right, the character rolls and we can fly around. Um, that'll conclude this first video. Uh, now that we have the flying mechanic kind of smoothed out, we can start working on shooting projectiles and building some targets for us to actually shoot at. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.